What's up, everybody? It's Jason Gray 503 from the Blood and Fire Country Club on WGT. I'm going to be sharing my entire screen with you. So you're going to see spreadsheets, you're going to see my game, etc. And today, we're going to talk about how I calculate wind. Um, and, you know, some people just want to do all feel and all that. Usually the best players are using spreadsheets or doing their calculations by hand on the calculator. I used to do them a lot by hand until I said, I'm doing this over and over. Why wouldn't I just use spreadsheets? And I was lucky enough to download a spreadsheet from somebody on the game um, and be able to use it. So let me show you how this all works. We'll go into practice mode. We'll pick a course. Um, let's just pick uh, Torrey Pines, fun nine. We'll go moderate wins tournament. I think I did practice mode, hopefully I did. All right. So off the tee, you're usually using around 80% backspin. With this much wind, it's going to go from the left-hand side here to the middle of the fairway. If you miss slightly into the wind, it doesn't go as much. If you miss with the wind, it goes over more. All right, so we're 144 out. So you see my spreadsheet here. I've got a wind calculation. So 144, elevation 0, 13 of the average wind, which is between... 12 and 14, right? You see here in the top left corner. Uh, and when you're looking at vertical wind, from 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock, there's zero vertical wind. And then from 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock, the more it gets down towards 6 o'clock, you give it more vertical wind in your face. And when it's going from 3 o'clock towards noon or 9 o'clock towards noon, uh, you give it more vertical wind as a tailwind. Okay. So this one is down from the 3 o'clock by a tick or two, so we'll call it 2% headwind, not much. So we got about 144 distance. We'll play, let's see here, this one plays along, yeah, it plays four yards long. We got a little more than that. So 148, we'll hit a 7 iron, 96%. So headwind, 96%. I've mapped out my clubs. So this is what you see here at the 87 ball and the 85 irons. These are the carry distances. Here's my 154 full backspin. That's what I plug into my club carry. Tells me the percentage here. A lot of people will calculate the distance by in their head or by hand. They'll have 148, and then they'll divide their club distance by that on the calculator. That's what this is doing. However, instead of knowing the exact carry distance, they'll just look at the club and they'll say, oh, here, look, 160. Okay, let's go 160 divided by 148 and see what I need to hit it or 148 divided by 160. Or they'll say, okay, it's 160, take off five yards for full backspin, 155, which is close, right? This is 154. Um, but knowing your carry distance is gonna help you be more accurate. So 96% full back. Okay, so here's how I do the lateral wind, okay? You see this picture right here of a clock? I got this picture from uh, Young46's video. And it, supposedly, and this works for me, so I, I follow it, on this clock, you see from 12 to 3, okay? So this is pointing at almost 3 o'clock. It's between 3 and 4, so it's not quite 3.30. It's probably 3.10 or 3.20 on the clock, right? So you look at what 3 o'clock is. It's 100% of a lateral wind. 3.30 over here is 93%. So this is kind of in between. This is probably 96%. So what I'll do, I do it on a physical calculator, but we'll do it over here. 96% times the wind. The wind is 13, okay? Gives us 12.48. So we're gonna take our wind, 12.48, divided by the factor for the distance, which Rafi got this. I don't even know how he got this or figured this out. So Rafi, if you wanna, if you see this and you wanna put a comment here where you got this, how you figured it out, that'd be great. But I do know how to use it. You go down here, you find the 144, which is almost 145. So when you put in this, you divide your wind by the factor. Factor here is 1.94 if it's 145, a little bit more if it's 144. So we'll call it 1.95. So our wind, 12.48, divided by 1.95 equals 6.4. So this should go from left to right, 6.4. Now each grid box is worth two. So if I move it like this, that's two. Move it like this, that's four. Move it like this, that's six. I go half a box or a, to the line, that's one. So this would be seven total. We're at 6.4 on the calculator. So 
half the distance between here and <coughs> the line. Now, seven iron probably spins back a little bit, probably goes to the right a little bit. So I'll give a little bit of extra for that. So that's how I figure out the, the lateral win. And then we're hitting it. What are we hitting it? 96% did I say? I mean, my spreadsheet too big. Kind of my other spreadsheet. All right, 96%. And here we go. Remember, if you're going to hit uh, Miss Ding, which most of us Miss Ding, right off to Miss Ding into the wind like I just did, makes the ball go a little straighter than you are to Miss Ding with the wing. So I would have Miss Ding that to the right. It would have flown into the rough maybe. All right. What greens are we on? 12 greens. Okay. 6.4.5. By the way, yes, I will post a Google Drive link to both these spreadsheets. You can download them, play with them, make them your own. Um, I downloaded this from Whole Line, I think, or he gave it to me, or I found out his YouTube or something. Okay, so the way I use the meter over here, in these smaller meters, like the the 10 and 15 meter, I add 4% because I hit a little more firm. Um, on the 30 meter, I add 3%. On the 60 meter, I add 1%, give or take, depending on if it's uphill or downhill. Okay, so this, and I like to stay my putts under 50% of power. That way it's a little more time to get to the ding. So if you can putt them around 20, 30% or less most time, that's better, in my opinion. But I know how to hit them from all distances. So here, I add 4%, so I'm going to hit it 42%. Maybe a little more because it's short and I don't want any slight break to go in there. Solid putt. All right, tailwind behind us. So if you look up here, okay, this, and this is from trial and error, and it works for me. And if you're close to the actual percentage, um, it's going to be good enough. If you're way off, it's probably gonna hurt you and you'll figure it out. But I kind of figure, even though it doesn't make sense in my mind that much, but when this is pointing a little more to the left, kind of, you know, right at, let's call it 11 o'clock, that seems to be about 75% of a tailwind. So this is a little more than that, so I'd call that about an 80% tailwind. Now off the tee here, I don't really need to know that because I know I clear this no matter what. I'm not gonna get too far up here. I mean, I'm not gonna go 350, so. Probably go 335, 330. Oh crap, don't hit that late, that's crazy. Well, zoom lag and talk and it's probably a 25, 25, 30, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna hit a punch here. My punch with full backspin from the fairway goes about 48, 49 yards. The wind on a punch affects it, but not much. Uh, coming out of the rough, I don't know exactly. I mean, 2550 doesn't do much, but I don't know exactly what it's going to do. So I think I'll just fully hammer this here. Hmm. Oh, wow. It didn't. It was basically just the same thing. All right. So under the pin, straight putt, 5.3, uphill point. All right, this hole is crazy, all right? Uh, I'm playing with a more spinny ball, so you gotta trust it out for yourself, but usually I take off 10 off the top here. Although it's been getting me a tiny bit short lately, so I'm gonna take off eight. So instead of doing 194, I'm gonna do 186. So 186 is the distance, minus the 38 elevation, uh, 11 is the wind, and this wind, See, it's almost diagonal enough to be 75%, but a little less. So, again, it's from trial and error and filling it out, but I'm seeing this as about 65-70% of a, of a headwind. So, I'm going to go 70%. So, 182 is what I need to get to the hole. And then you think about, okay, if I get it 182, how's the ball and the spin react? But 183 is a 5 iron. Although, I don't trust my 5 iron that much. And when you're playing backspin into the wind, especially with a spinny ball, 
the wind tends to affect it slightly more. So I'm going to give it one little tick here to help. We'll go 100%. Okay, so this is how we got like the, the vertical wind and all that stuff we're talking about. Now we're going to go lateral. So this is pointing at 8 o'clock, give or take. So 8 o'clock, if you look over here, is 82% of the lateral wind. So I'll show you on screen, 0.82 is 82%. Multiply by the average of the wind, which is 11. That's going to be our wind, 9.02. We're going to divide this by our distance factor, 194. Look over here on this chart, find 194 on the left. So 195 is 1.42. Close enough. Okay, 6.3. Now remember, when it's downhill a lot, the ball's in the air longer, the wind is a little stronger, it moves the ball more. When it's uphill, the, the wind affects it less. Secondly, on this hole, anything slightly right of this is a disaster and comes down here. So you'd rather be left of this pin than right. I think bottom left is the perfect putt, but it's really hard to get there, but we'll try. So what did we say the calculation was? 6.3, so six, two, four, six, point three is about there. Now, if it does play a little stronger, doesn't always, but let's say it does, I'd rather be a little more left of this pin anyways. So I'm not gonna over adjust to the right. And I might miss it to the right slightly, although I'd rather be in this rough or rather be here than way down this hill, I think. And I just don't wanna be in the bunker. That's probably the worst spot, okay? So we've got our calculation of, we're gonna do 100% with the five iron. And I'll leave the pin in so we can see it. The lateral wind didn't move it as much as we were thinking. Kind of played out the way it should because we were right on it and then I hit it early and moved over there. Okay. Just got to make your putts. So 7.5 minus 3, we got 4.5. The dots, if you get used to looking at what you feel is normal speed, I'd say that these first two or three dots is pretty normal speed. The last one or two aren't doing anything. So a 4.5 putt, I would usually aim about something like this. And I think that's gonna be fine here too because this will move it over right away, then it'll just flatten out. And I hit it with pace. So you see this wants me to hit it 23, 25, 28%. I like to hit it a lot firmer on these shorter putts to try and take out some of that break. Yes, it'll bite you in the butt sometimes, Solid. but I just like to do it that way. All right, you see this wind mark right here? I would see this as 50-ish percent. So 50% of a tailwind. When you miss with it like that, the ball will go to the right more, but it will give you slightly more distance too. So doing it like that on purpose off the drive is actually a good idea if you can control it and you know what's gonna happen. So we got 133 up five. The wind is 10, that's the middle of the two. Like I said, it's around a 50% tailwind so we need to go 131 I can go 94% of a 8 iron because that's my 8 iron carry uh, with full backspin and I like to play full backspin wherever possible now because it's coming in uphill just slightly uh, the wind will be a little less effective and the ball will release a little bit more than it normally does and because we're a tailwind is gonna release a little bit so a full backspin 8 iron with this spinny ball will probably stay right where it's at usually. I'm gonna guess it's gonna go one or two yards forward in these conditions. Well, let's find out together. Okay, so we've got our distance, our ideas there. Now we need to say, okay, well, where do we aim now that we have that? And is this a lot of work? Yes, but if you wanna get great at something, you can't put in guessing or a tiny bit of effort. You gotta take notes and you gotta learn how to execute that works for you. And you gotta be consistent with it. Um, so spreadsheet golf, serious golf, all that, if that's not for you, that's fine, enjoy the game the way you want to. But I want to be as precise as possible and get better, so this is the way I do it, and uh, if you guys follow this, it will help you. Okay, so look at the wind. It's pointing towards where on the clock? Pointing towards two o'clock, I'd say. So two o'clock is about 82%. So we'll go 0.82 times the wind, which is 10, equals 0.82. Divide that by the factor, we need 133. So we find 133 on the chart here. It's in between these two, so about 2.08. That's 3.9, so four boxes is what we need, four points 
each box is worth two, right? So two, four. Now the ball might release a little forward and a little to the right, but not much. I'm guessing one yard, maybe two, okay, if I hit it okay. And I'd rather be left here, I think, not super left, but rather just left of the pin. So I will ding or hit early is the intention. 99% of the four iron, of the eight iron, I mean. Hold on, I think that's wrong. I think I looked at the wrong wind. And make sure you look at the right wind. 94%. Ooh, could have been a disaster. All right, 94%. Wow, okay, 93. So what did I do wrong? Hmm, that just came up short, didn't it? So we are five yards short. Did hit slightly early. 1% less. Shouldn't be that short. So... You know, you pitch that in, you see what happens. But now you look at the wind, you say, is that 50% tailwind? I think so, but it might be only 40. So let's see what that changes. Oops. The the wind, 40% only. That makes me have to hit a half percent more. Let's hit this 95%. Let's go back to our almost four. And let's see what happens. Ninety-six percent this time on accident. Is it too long? Maybe. Yeah, it's too long. So ninety-four to ninety-five percent is what we're supposed to do. Miss with the wind though. All right, eight iron. One, two. Nah. Pulled it. Not a forgiving hole. All right, go 95%. Wow. Okay, so one thing I did want to see though is if we landed here, did it release one or two yards? So it released three yards, okay? So our idea or prediction about that was fine. The lateral wind is not playing as strong as I've calculated. That's clear, because I keep end up on the left. The, but the tailwind is not as strong either. I'm a bit perplexed, but let's move on. 10.3, 2.1, count the dots, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, so about 6 and a half, 13, 50%, which is the middle dot, lining up that with the middle dot, 50%, go to the 30 meter, 35%, spin you put on the ball the more the wind's gonna affect it because backspin makes the ball go up high in the air all right so I see this as a 40 50 percent wind so we'll go that's moving up a little bit flickering up I'm going to go 30 percent uh, 152 we need about 90 Nine percent from the seven iron. Now for this, where are we pointing? Eight, eight thirty, eight, eight to eight thirty. So eight o'clock is eighty-two. Eight thirty is ninety-three. We'll go eighty-seven percent somewhere in the middle. Times twelve. It's ten point four four divided by the factor for one fifty, which is one point eight nine. Five point five two. So two, four, five and a half. That's landing it right there. Um, seven iron might come back. It might spin left a little bit. So we're going to go just a little extra. Let's see our notes here. The bottom middle of this pin is best. So I'm being right at it. And we said, what, 99? 90, yeah, 99%. Okay. 
Let's check it out. Hmm. Whoa. Interesting, because the wind didn't look that strong, but yeah, that did not go far. So I, I don't have any notes about adding on this hole. Hole five. All right, so 150 minus four, 12. Let's give the vertical wind a little more respect, maybe. 100% of a seven iron. All right, we'll go our two, four, five and a half. This hole might play a little long, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, that's way short. So I'm 26 divided by 3, 8, 8 yards short. So let's see here. With 7 iron into head, and might play 8 yards short. Okay, test out my theory there. First time I ran into some on this hole, I think. So if it's eight yards short, we play 158. And now we're at 162, which would be uh, 96 or 97 percent. Um, six iron. 96 and a half, 96, a little bit more. Wow, really? Really? Oh, that went past it though. Now I'm now I'm four yards past it. So six iron to headwind plays four yards long. Uh, long? Yeah, I gotta add four yards. Four yards long. This is four yards longer. All right, hate to bore y'all, but let's do let's try this. One fifty-four. So ninety-four percent. Go in. Man, now that went short. What the? Five yards. Now, I put the irons on there because I made the mistake on other courses. And then a lot of times my four iron isn't affected by it that much. Be it these other irons, mid to longer irons, are. So, um,. I would note it if you're thinking, man, this place short or long. Oh crap! I would note which which irons it's with, and then adjust. And it might be with all of them, but that's why I do it. All right. How much more of this do you guys want to see? Give me a couple more examples. All right, two sixty one. Not going to get to the par five. Got to change the camera angles too. So there's a headwind. This is a slope here. Being down here putting compared to pitching from here, it's probably worse. But, but in reality, it's not that much worse. So let's just go crazy. Let's give it a bunch of top spin. Oh, wait. I got a juiced up one. Do I want to show you a juiced up shot or just play normal? I'm going to play kind of like what my normal one would do. My normal one goes about this much. We'll see if that top spin runs it up further. Oh, will it get up the hill is the question. Nope. That's okay, though. Would you guys rat? You put in the comments, would you rather be putting from here or pitching from just off the fringe? Now, a lot of people say, oh, my gosh, I'd rather be pitching but I, or uh, punching or whatever you do from 30 yards away or so. I know you all got that mapped out and you're real good at getting it close, but you're hardly ever going to be that far after this putt, and you have a better chance of making it probably, or it's similar. So I think welcoming this putt, unless it's a ridiculous putt, is probably the approach. That's my opinion. What do you guys think? All right. We're having a break down below. And you see here it's, it goes drastic. It goes up, 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 up. It's the full uphill 
for you know half of the putt, but it's not as full there. All right, but the break goes in the first half. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. So I'm gonna double it to six, make it twelve, because the other half's not doing it. Ninety-two. I feel like that's too much, but it might be. What's this look? Uh, on the sixty meter, remember I like to add one, maybe two, if it's a long putt and it's uphill. I'm gonna start with adding one, so seventy-one percent. We'll putt preview this. Seventy-one. Oh wow, those early breakers really took it. Wow, it took like another hundred percent. It was like here. Let's try that. But the 71 is pretty good. We went two feet past the hole. Each box about two feet. So we'll go 71. Missed, uh, missed a bit. But see this? This one didn't come out as much. Let's try it again. All right. So I did hit that lead. But let's go 150 here. 71%. And it missed another 50%. All right, let's go 175. And I missed it late. I mean, that might be the reason why. All right, I'm going to putt this again, guys, because I don't want to be down there putting, but I've been down there before. And if you can get an eagle putt or a lot closer, Pretty nice. Okay, let's go 160. Putt preview, 71%. Okay, so yeah, if you get out too wide, those breaks don't. You get outside of some of this break right here where it's strongest. I guess that's what happened. So that was 160. Let's go 140, 140%. Let's go 71. The tricky putt. I'm just gonna do this to spare us. Uh, how far is that? 36 feet? 34 feet. 34 feet. It's around 150 on 12 greens. All right, I think we got 79. I think we'll call it a wrap on, the, on this hole right here, this last hole, hole 7. So... You know, look at the winds. I would call this wind 40%, 30% of a tailwind. That's a huge drive. All right, 129. Down three, no vertical wind really, maybe one down. So we're at 128, which is my 80% 900, I think. Give or take, eh, 80%. This should stop where it lands. We're downhill, that's why, and a little bit of tailwind, and it's a wedge that does that. So I'm gonna go nine, because it's basically at nine o'clock, so the wind is full force, nine divided by 130. The factor for that is 2.11. 4.2, so 2, 4.2. Do I want it to land right on the pin? Just slight to the right of it. If I hit it well enough. Ah, early, it's gonna be left of the pin. And a little, little fuerte, a little strong. Um, but what's this putt like? Straight putt coming in just a little bit like this. Or something. Solid All right, guys. Well, there you have it. There's the way I calculate shots, the wind, the putting, both vertical and lateral. Um, took me a while to learn it by watching a video like this, by messing around with the spreadsheet, and then just figuring out my own, you know, what something might mean, the 40%, the 80%. Again, I don't have it down to an exact science, but it's good enough, close enough that if I execute the shot, it's a pretty good shot. So I'll put the link in the description below, or Pete will, uh, for both spreadsheets. You can download them, use them however you want. And uh, if you guys want to come play a game, find us at the Blood and Fire Country Club. Have a good one.